Good day, everyone. I pray today that you know the Father's care for you. And that as you look around today, that you'd see the Father's creative activity. That you'd see what the Father is doing in the world around you, in the world that he has blessed you and I to live in. Because as we do that, we begin again to just reignite in us the fact that God is God and that he has made everything and that we have been blessed to enjoy it. Now, we go to creation there because we live in a wonderful world. God has given us a wonderful universe to explore. I'm a Star Trek fan and a Star Wars fan. I see them completely differently. But I see Star Trek as the idea of exploring the universe, exploring what God has done, going beyond our normal realms here to see what's out there. We have been blessed with Hubble telescopes and other telescopes that help us to see beyond just what we see here in the Milky Way. I've taken young people to camps and shown them the Milky Way for the first time, taught them the gospel and the stars and helped them to see God's greater creative activity. At the same time, I've been in awe of earthquakes and volcanoes as they rumble through because the earth is shifting as volcanoes come up from the earth and the, the beauty, and, and I understand the tragedy there as well, but the beauty of that is it just the colors that come. I'm always in awe of being able to live here in San Francisco and watch a sunrise from the east and, and what it, how the pictures it paints in the skies it comes over the, the hills where I live. I stand in awe again as I watch the sun set and watch what God has done as he again paints a wonderful picture in the sky of what the evening is doing. I've been in awe as we watch the cosmic dance between our earth and the sun and the moon as we see eclipses. I was at Camp Lake Pyro years ago with a group of young people and there was a lunar eclipse and we were able to lay out there and just watch as it happened. And then suddenly it was like someone had turned off all the lights and you could see stars forever in awe of God's creative activity. We, we look at this from this whole standpoint of what we learn in, in Hebrews 11.3. It says this, by faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God and that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. In other words, God spoke and creation happened. Now, in, in a modern day, with all the things we get to see and do in the universe around us, and as we find things that are historical, you have to balance scripture and science. I don't argue with good science, but I believe scripture. Now, did God create everything? Did God speak it out of nothing? Yes. By faith, we believe that. By faith, we know that. Did God create the world in six days? Well, people get confused there and get, get they're all upset with the whole idea of 24 hours. But if you look closely and read the Hebrew word yam, it really means a period of time. Because often we don't want to give God time. Yes, God speaks and it exists. God came down, took a handful of dirt, and gave you and I a body and then breathed into us a soul, as C.S. Lewis says. By faith, we understand as we see the world, as we see God's creative activity, as we see planets, as we see constellations, as we see all of these things, we realize that God has created these things. If you look at the whole idea of constellations, the constellations in our day, we give them numbers. But if we go back in time, we see that each of the constellations basically have the same names. 
we see that each of the constant stars in the constellations each have the same names. Why bring that up? Because it is God's creative activity as he has created these things to give each one of us in our own different cultures on different sides of the planet the same names <clears throat> of stars, the same names of constellations, the same names of planets. This isn't something that began with the Romans and Greeks. If you go back past the Romans and Greeks to the Chinese, to around the globe, you will find, and you go to Africa, you will find all of them have the same names. Why? Because this is God's creative activity. We know in the Psalms that God has named each one of the stars. Why does he do that? He does that so that you and I will know with certainty, with hearts and minds of faith, that he has created these things. Yes, there are those who argue creationism. There are those who argue the Big Bang Theory. There are those who argue everything in between. By faith, by the convictions of what we know and who we know, we know that God spoke creation into existence. Scientists keep going back, 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 trying to find the time, the element. There are even those who will give you a day, day, time. No one knows. But they keep going back, trying to find where this big bang is, that things just and exploded. Is really God speaking. And as you look at human development, as you look at the development of humankind, as you look at the development of the earth, you see God's creative activity. I've had young people ask, Pastor Jerry, what, what about dinosaurs? Well, what about them? They're there. You see the physical evidence. Are dinosaurs in the Bible? There's some words in Hebrew that do indicate large animals. But as you look at the Jurassic periods, as the earth has formed, as God has formed and developed the earth, and if you give God yam, the time, you begin to see that, oh, yes, these are developments. And each one of those developments, surprise, surprise, match what happens in the creation epics in Genesis. And so, again, we look at what God has done. He has given us his creative activity in the past. And he continues to give us create his creative activity now. And he continues to give us his creative activity forward as we begin to look at other places, as we begin to study Mars, as we go beyond Mars. Remember, I'm a Star Trek fan. Let's go explore. Let's go see God's creative activity. Let's go see what God has done. Because we know with certainty that our God, the God of the universe, the God who owns it all, created it all. And in creating it all, he wants us to understand it and enjoy his creative activity. Whether it is something as simple as a sunrise or a sunset. Something as marvelous as the birth of a child. Something as spectacular as flying over the oceans are flying over the United States or Europe and seeing things that you've never seen before. Whatever it is, it is God's creative activity saying to you that I've made these things for you to enjoy until I call you home and you see the real thing. Because there we get to see and enjoy God's creative activity without the brokenness of sin. So, yes, we believe that God spoke and created all of this out of nothing because he owns it and has blessed us to enjoy it, his creative activity. Precious Father, we bless you and thank you that you've given us this, your creation. Lord, to live in and to enjoy. Thank you that we're your children still living in some ways in your garden. So, Father, we bless you and thank you for it. Until, Father, we get to see you face to face and see the new heaven and the new earth that is not broken, but it is your glory. 
These things, Lord, we pray in your holy, your mighty, and your blessed name, Lord. Amen. Be blessed today, my dear friends.